part of geology that everyone's pretty fond of is paleontology. It's super cool. Dinosaurs, fossils, woo! But before we can really get into big boy paleontology stuff, we gotta talk about modes of preservation and how fossils and trace fossils are formed. So here we go. Geology. So paleontology is the study of fossils and fossils are naturally preserved remains or traces of animals or plants that lived in the geologic past. And this is really useful for a number of different things. There are certain criteria that make fossils really happen. So starting out, um, an aquatic environment is usually going to see a lot of fossils. Um, most fossils are going to be preserved hard parts. So hard parts like shells and whatnot are a lot easier to preserve because they'll withstand the test of time over something soft like a, a jellyfish body, which maybe will degrade over time and not be preserved. Um, these two things are really going to make a bias in the fossil record towards marine. So that means that there's going to be a lot more marine fossils because there's hard parts that are more likely to be preserved over soft bodied land organisms. Um, other things that are important is that um, these things are surviving tectonic processes. Um, there's a lack of oxygen in the environment, which will increase preservation potential. Um, and then another thing that's important is a fast sedimentation rate. So when we're talking about fossils being created, something dies, it's buried, and a fast sedimentation rate is poured in that. Then it's petrified, replaced, some sort of preservation happens. Um, then it's exhumed and you get a really happy geologist. So sweet, awesome, cool. First things first, there's two major type of fossils, a body fossil, which is actually the organism itself, and then a trace fossil, which is just like footprint or some sort of trace that um, the animal was there. Um, so those can also be called ichnofossils. Oh, fun slash kind of morbid earth science knowledge. You know those little shells you pick up at the beach and your friend's like, oh cool, I'm looking for shells with a hole in them so that I can make a pretty little necklace. Well, those holes are actually like borings where some organism dissolved the calcium carbonate, went inside the shell and ate that bad boy in there. So really they're wearing the, like the death of this freaking organism around their neck. But still, the necklaces are kind of pretty, so you know, I'll give them that. So the big modes of preservation. First you get unaltered. That's just like a shell or something, something that's not altered. Okay, going on to the bigger guys. Entrapment. What is that? Next up is entrapment. That's where some organism gets trapped in something, like a bug trapped in amber. Um, but this is occasionally could include something getting trapped in tar or ice. Um, leaching is when the more soluble portions of remains of an organism get dissolved. Um, and this commonly results in um, the bleaching and the pitting of shells and bones. Next is carbonization. This is a change by chemical action of the original animal or plant. Um, and it's made into a thin film of carbon that's going to outline the shape of the whole organism um, onto a rock surface. Um, then moving to permineralization, Woo. hard to say. Uh, that's the deposition and pore space of buried material by fluid flow. Um, and usually this will be calcite, silica, pyrite, or dolomite. Um, next you get recrystallization, which is going to be the conversion of the original material into more stable forms. For example, aragonite moving to calcite. You can see um, crystals forming. Uh, last is replacement which is a complete dissolution and replacement of new materials. Um, so that's the last really for this, but then there is one last big form of mode of preservation and that is casts and molds. Um, and those two can be kind of tricky. Now a mold is the imprint of a fossil and then the cast or the 3D replica of the fossil. Um, so an internal mold is the mold of the inside of the organism, and the external mold is an impression of the organism onto some medium. So, now that I've spieled my spiel, it's your turn. <laughs>